<laughs> now, mm. here's the fun stuff. Mr. Bob Backlund turns up. Uh, do not exacerbate me. Where is your lexicon? All these words that he knows how to pronounce but doesn't quite know how to put into a <laughs> sentence. And uh, Which makes it great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it makes it even better. It's fantastic. They're just like, oh, <laughs> do not exacerbate me. Which, in fairness, is the right place to put that word. <laughs> Um, but I actually wrote this. Where's your lexicon? And then he just goes, "Yeah." He just adds a "yeah" at the end. Of it. Fantastic. Uh, he calls the audience. <laughs> he calls the audience plebeians and stupid, etc. Then Bob introduces the administrator and criticizer, who disciplines his students from the University of Knowledge, Dean Douglas. <laughs> and uh, you walk to the ringside, saying words to the audience like failure. Uh, before a VT yeah. rolls of razor smacking you uh, backstage. I think this was from SummerSlam, uh, where you were at the mm-hmm. chalkboard, and then there's a, where he goes... I remember that vividly. I had the videotape, and it's, it's, it looked like he absolutely clumped you with that punch. Yeah. Well, we... You know, there, it was funny. We had gone through this little dance there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where, <clears throat> where uh, one night we walked in. I was being very careful in, in our matches careful not to be ecw right because uh you know in ecw we laid our stuff in fairly solid like if if i was hitting pitbull too i wasn't hitting him as hard as i possibly could hit him but i was hitting him with probably 60 percent live round you know like, like, i mean there's a famous picture of me hitting him and the picture was taken right as my fist is hitting his forehead and there's fans standing around their faces are all and you see the sweat popping off but you can see his skin like recoiling from the punch. And when I went to WWF, I didn't want to bring it up there and all of a sudden get tagged with his, oh, he's stiff, you know, because what one guy in ECW thought was like the way we did it, uh, somebody else going, I'm doing that here. So he came into the dressing room one night and he, Scott, made it a point to say, I guess to try to embarrass me, said, uh, hey, f- hey uh, Dean, uh, uh, we're, we're every bit as tough as you guys in ECW. You don't have to pull your shit with me. Go ahead and lay it in. Right. Okay, noted. Next night we went and did, and I laid it in like I would be in ECW. Astonishingly, he came into the dressing room and he said, hey, Dean, I know what I said, but geez. You know, like, like come on. I said, like, well, he said ECW. That was ECW. And, uh, you know, it, it was just like one of those types of things. The odd part about all of this uh, to me was in just a few short years before, you know, uh, Razor was in, like with Johnny Ace and I were together, Razor was in WCW's Diamond Stud, traveled with us almost every loop, um, got along great, no issues whatsoever. And also prior to this, I, in 90, you know, been in WWF and Marty, Sean, Dustin, and I would all uh, hang together. We were sort of the click then, um, uh, click in the, in the sense of being a group that hung around with each other, not the, the shit the click did would later pull. Uh, so when I'm watching this, and there were several things, and I'll point it out during the, during as we're talking about the match, the fans over the years have heard me say stuff like lead assing me, um, throwing the timing off. And my God, a bunch of this stuff jumped out at me last night watching the match. And I'd have Chris rewind and say, okay, right here, watch for this. Oh, yeah, I see it. And then watch this. Just little things that really glaringly, uh, for for me, the trained eye, it just screamed out off the screen. But then even for someone like Chris, who's just a fan of wrestling, watching it and playing back and going, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. You know, it's uh, it's really glaring. And it, it, other things, but we'll get, get to that in a second. There was in that B-roll that you're talking about at the very outset um, where he, uh, I want to hit this microphone. I saw my shirt, uh, but he, um, uh, there was, they also be ruled when he was wrestling X-Pac, I think. And I, it was from, uh, Canton, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And I run down, climb the top rope and do the splash and roll out. <laughs> I remember it incredibly well because I had been in street clothes all day and had to take my wrestling. I drove over like a two hour drive from my house. So I didn't have my wrestling gear with me. I just brought Dean Douglas street clothes. And when I ran down the ringside and climbed up and dove off, one thing about the WWF ring is it's stiff, right? Because it's got these giants in it. When I come off, I had no knee pads on underneath. 
And so when I hit and I got to then scurry out of like, so the referee doesn't catch me. Right. And if you watch me hit the floor, I do this like sort of like dance. Like my, like I, I fucked my knees up and <laughs> hurt like hell to run. And I thought after that, I like, put knee pads on dumbass If you got to mm-hmm. do something like that. Uh, but those are the things that jumped out at me. So let's go ahead and get into the match. The whole match. And you were also saying beforehand that, uh, was it lead assing, you said? Yes. So there were several. First of all, what struck me was I don't remember Scott and I having any matches that good. I thought it was a really good match. Um, and and you'll see, let me put Scott over before I you know throw some heat on him. And, and, and again, not disparage of the guy. We put that heat behind us. Just describing what I'm looking at. Watch when you're watching that match back at In Your House 3, how impeccably Scott is placing himself. When uh, he's outside the ring and I do the vault over and double hammer down on his back. He's got himself selling, 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 sees me in position and puts himself right in perfect position. I mean, impeccable. So that will tell you that Scott knew how to do it, right? And if you watch, there's that segment of the chaining at the very beginning of the match. Uh, I was pretty good at chaining, and uh, I was surprised at how crisp he was at it. And uh, not surprised at that moment, and and like looking back at it, because I don't remember Scott doing that. Because later he would like fall back more on being the character. Hey, yo, toothpick and woo and all that bullshit. Scott knows how to do it. You know, you can see it in, in, in this match. There is the first thing that jumped out at me was uh, the uh, at the end of the chaining. Uh, we then go into a spot where uh, where he goes to suplex me. Drops me behind, and then we started this this into the rope thing. So, if you watch closely, in the first pass, Scott throws a right handed clothesline. He's right handed. Watch the second. Now he's throwing left. So if I'm running straight at you, okay, and I'm ex- you just did the right hand, so I'm going to be coming to your right side. But last minute, you do this, which I don't recall Scott ever doing that. At other times, he's now making me do this coming off the ropes. So I look a little bit, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Like, why did he go that side instead of this side? It should, for a right handed guy, it should always be this side, even for left handed guys. But very occasionally, somebody who's predominantly left will say, hey, I do everything left. And so you know to go to that side. That was the first thing that jumped out at me. There was the, uh, the second thing was on the, uh, uh, where uh I'm trying to think of a specific spot in the match. Uh well I, I it'll pop in my head as to where it was in the match, but there's uh we're on the floor. So as we've you know fought out to the floor, and the first time I, I pick him up for a slam on the floor, right? Bobby's drawing the ref and watch his plant foot. His plant foot is where he's supposed to push off. To make this, um, you know, and Scott's a big guy, 265, 270. He's a big, big man and long. So fortunately at that point, he gives me zero help. It's just sort of like a, just goes in and I get him up because I was strong enough at the time and early enough in the match, no help whatsoever. Later in the match, however, we end up on that same side of the floor and I pick him up to run him into the post. Watch what his legs do. He's just a dead hump of weight. Now, if I wanted to have been a smart ass at that point, I could have just gone and dropped him, let him fall on his shoulder, let him fall on his neck, whatever. Uh, your screw up, not mine. And uh, but you know, you, you're not thinking that way at that specific point of the match. You know, th- there's all these unwritten things in your head. A, you know that Vince likes this guy, right? Uh, B, Vince is putting you over in this match and you clearly setting up some kind of an angle here. And so this is the time that both of you want to be on your best. You want to show like, hey, we can deliver for the crowd. And I think we did deliver in this match. Uh, There was nothing about that match that I watched that I went, yeah. You know, I think it really, the the finish of it, uh, uh, the the running with Pac, um, the storyline they were playing that I'm trying to, weasel this wedge between these two friends 
uh, which is what a, a guy like that would do. Uh, I thought a lot of it was impressive. I was far more impressed. I don't recall in my memory Scott and I having anywhere near that good of a match. It always seemed like pulling teeth to me. Uh, but after watching it last night, I was like, whoa. Like, see, Scott is showing he can go. Watch the chaining segment. Watch his positioning. Watch when Pac comes out and the, the way he pushes him and everything. Uh, you don't look at any of that and go, yeah, it looks phony. right? Everything looked look, look crisp. Um, the stuff where he's got me in the arm bar, watch his positioning of his hands, leaning on the shoulder. It, it, perfectly done. Perfectly executed. I couldn't give a poor grade to that. Uh, but, you know, then start smacking the head. Now, people go, I wouldn't take that. Well, that's his character. That's what his character would do, which is why I gave it back to him a little bit later. Like, I'm okay, you wanted to punk me, and I'm going to punk you back. Um, <laughs> when you see Scott leave and you can see Eddie ain't happy, um, and again, it just perplexes the hell out of me. Not that anybody wants to say, well, losing a match doesn't matter. Losing a match to a debuting guy, like you had said earlier, right? This uh, you know, if you don't want to do this angle, go to Vince and say, I don't like the guy. I don't want to work with him. I don't think he's very good. Whatever, whatever your argument is, I'm, I'm guessing that the way he had Vince's ear, that there'd be more than probably a, a, a receptive audience. Uh, but, you know, I think that he realized that we could go, you know, we could do this. And, uh, that, that was my biggest takeaway was even in spite of those things that I pointed out. And there were others, less less obvious, but for the fans watching it, the first slam on the floor, no help. The second slam, which was a back run into the apron, into the post, zero help. Uh, and then the, the clothesline right, the clothesline left. Uh, you know, forcing the guy running to do sort of this, like, oh, like oh, I'm in a zigzag here. And each of those things sort of makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing. And to me... That that is even more of a testament to Scott's ability, mm -hmm. you know. Because if you're going to do all this stuff, you know, like you're intentionally doing it, and it's and he's wise enough to know that it ain't making him look bad. Like, there's no fan in the audience going, "Hey, why did you just throw a left handed clothesline?" Uh, but to the seasoned eye, you're looking and go, "Okay, well, right then left, no sense." Um, and Chris then asked me, he said, "Like, is it always?" I said, "Yes, unless you're working with somebody that's just." over the top left, like predominant left, then they'll typically say to you, Hey James, I, I, I do everything left. Right. So, you know, like to shoot to that side, I've never seen anybody do one and then the other. Um, so just, just those strange oddities that stuck out of me reading between those lines as a trained eye, you can see that Scott really does know what he's doing. And I think if you look at the later incarnations of razor Ramon, not doing those things, uh, relying, falling back on the, Hey, less effort. I don't have to do as much. I can do this in the fingers and the toothpick and get over. I, uh, I, I was telling Moose last night, I tell people this all the time when people would say, Hey, let's go out there and take it easy. The, the fact of the matter is the, the truth of it is I didn't have but one speed. I didn't know how to go out there and be 11 tenths, the franchise or nine tenths, the franchise. I knew how to go out there and do it. Um, but he, he showed like, and all those things, good and bad, that he knew exactly what he was doing. And what really stuck out to me was his positioning and in the entirety of the match, he's, he's in the right place at every time.